Hello, my name is Keith, and today I'm uh, much delighted to be here with you. And I'd like to speak something about the grace, the grace of God. You see, um, all the time we are told, hey, you're not under the law, you're under the grace. And you really ask yourself, so what is this grace? How can I be able to understand what is grace and how, how much can grace do for me? And what is actually grace? You see, these are terms that many people just hear, but then they never totally understand. For example, we always told that you're under grace, but so many times you go to different places and people are binding you to the law. For, for instance, a good example, I know this one will get uh, people uh, maybe in a negative way, but... If you're under grace, why are you paying tithe in church? Why do you pay tithe? Why do you do all those kind of things? You see, pastors will tell you, hey, you're under the grace. No, no, you're no longer under the law. You're under the grace. But still they will tell you, hey, but you have to do this. You have to pay us this and this. You have to do this. You have to do... There are so many number of things which are not under the grace. But people, they try to move them from the law and they say... This is a different uh, thing, you see, but it's like this was moved to here. You have to understand, because if you don't understand, you'll be conned, my friend. You'll be conned. The Bible says, Jesus, God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't love uh, someone who is giving because it's supposed to be done. Why are people moving things from the law to the grace? And today I want us to understand what is the grace of God, so that you can put it in your mind and uh, be able to understand. You know, such kind of messages many people don't like. And very soon I'll be doing a video specifically on tithing and why tithing is not under grace. So don't be fooled by these people. All right. Know the word of God. You shall know the truth and it will set you free. So now today I want to talk about understanding the grace of God. Uh, so grace, the word grace shows up about 170 times in the King James Bible. Uh, for me, I believe the King James Bible because the other Bibles, um, most of them are perversions. They, they are literally taking off words from the Bible. They're also adding things. They're changing statements. So I believe the King James Bible, the authorized version, 1611, is the true preserved word of God. So grace is not giving what... It, grace is literally God giving you what, what you don't deserve. You don't deserve eternal life. You don't deserve to be loved by Jesus Christ because of your sins. You don't deserve to go to heaven. You don't deserve to be called a child of God. You don't deserve to be a new creature. But God gives you all that due to grace. And grace is activated by faith. The only way you can activate grace is through faith. Faith is the main component of how you can be able to uh, to activate faith. So let's start with Ephesians 2, 8 uh, to 9. This is a very famous verse. Everybody knows it. For by grace you're saved through faith. All right? You're saved through faith. By grace you're saved through faith. All right? And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You're not saved by doing something. You're not saved by getting baptized. You're not saved by giving tithe, giving offering, doing all. Even Apostle Paul says, I work personally. Apostle Paul says, I work so that I'm not a burden to you. So when you see people are a burden to you, yes, you can always give someone when you have something. You can always give a pastor. You can always help a needy person. But you're not bound by those things. Those, those things cannot take you to heaven. No matter how much tithe you give, no matter how much offering you give, no matter how much... Baptism, in, even if you were baptized in River Jordan in Israel, that cannot save you. You're only saved by faith. It is by the grace of God through faith that you're saved, all right? So you have to understand what is grace and don't be bound by these people who are always preaching lies and their own heresies because they want you to be damned and they want to condemn you forever and make you feel that you have lost it. No, you have not lost it. You have God. God has told us that there's nothing you can do to earn salvation. You can't do anything. Literally, there's nothing you can do. It's only by the finished work of Christ on the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. All right. So it's all about the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace is everything in this today's age. Now, I want to show you a couple of times that 
You see, people say grace only came, uh, you know, after Jesus came uh, to the earth. No, grace has always been there. Grace totally has always been there. It's just people who have never understood that grace has always been there. All right. So I want to give you a few uh, examples of different times that God showed grace. All right. We see in the story of Adam and Eve, God gave instructions that Hey, Adam and Eve, don't eat from this uh, tree. But Eve ate, and there was also Adam, having loved his wife so much, he said, you see, uh, I'm going to do it also so that uh, I, I don't want you to die alone. And you see, Adam did it as well. You see, even, even the Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. Why? Because of one thing. You see, Adam loved his wife so much that he could be able be willing to die for her. That is exactly what Jesus did for us. But that's not the main point. The main point is, this is the first time we see God's grace. He would have killed these two immediately, but God showed them grace. What did uh, God do? He killed an animal and clothed them. So he shed blood. So we see God shedding blood and showing these people grace. All right. He killed an animal. All right. God killed an animal. And... He showed grace. All right. So this is the first time that you're seeing the, the, the grace of God being implied and being shown through Adam and Eve. God could have said, okay, you have done that. Uh, you're finished. No, but God showed grace. Grace is literally mercy. Mercy. Having deserved to die, but you don't die. God does something different. Then we see the other time of Cain and Abel. We see Cain and Abel. All right. Now, Cain and Abel, the two went to, go, uh, to call upon the name of God, uh, to call upon God. So Abel gives God blood sacrifice as demanded and God accepts. But then we see Cain <laughs> decided, OK, God is asking for blood, but then I'm going to give my works. This is uh, my pineapples. This is my watermelons. These are my things, the things that I've worked for. So Cain decides, this is what I'm going to give God. So he gave his works. But Cain gave a sacrifice, gave a blood atonement, gave, uh, sorry, not a blood atonement. He gave blood like God has always uh, needed, has always asked. You see here, they had to be blood. But then what happens? This guy... God accepts, all right? God accepts his, his sacrifice. And Cain, he refuses, all right? He refuses his works. So what does that imply? God shows grace to Abel for having done his will, all right? But rejected Cain for having despised his grace, all right? So this guy decided, I'm going to do my work. I'm going to give my work. I will give my work. So Cain gave his work. Abel ag accepts what uh, grace God has given him because he was a sinner. But then God told him, hey, if you're coming to me, always come through blood. So this fella decided, fine, I'm going to come through blood. Blood, so he got grace. God showed him grace, but the other guy, he did not show him grace. So what happened? You know the story. Cain ended up feeling so much jealous and he killed his brother. So another time that we are seeing uh, grace showing up, it is in the time of Noah. Noah. So Noah, according to Genesis uh, 6, 8, uh, Genesis uh, 6, verse 8, we can read this one. Uh uh, or let me just paraphrase. You can just read. The Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God looked for someone to save. And so Noah was living right and gave him grace. But God needed you, him to do something. So what did God tell Noah to do? Noah, he was told by God, hey, I need you to do something. I need you to build an ark. So he listened to what God told him and through that having listened to god's instructions god showed him grace and he did not destroy him him and his family of eight you see following god's will god will always give you grace but if you don't follow god's will what's going to happen he's going to uh he's going to be angry with you yes he showed grace to adam and eve 
Yes, all that happened. But then, you see, this whole thing that I'm teaching you here is to show you that grace has always been there. You see, this guy got grace. It's not that Noah was uh, sinless. No. <laughs> There's no place that we see Noah got saved. No. It is just God showing grace to Noah and deciding, okay, despite everything, I'm going to still show you grace. All right? Abraham was another guy. Abraham. We see Abraham, God giving grace to Abraham. Abraham was told to go to a new land, that is Canaan, to separate himself from the other people. You see, the, 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 the time of Abraham, people were sinners here and there. They were doing wrong things. And God checked and said, is there any one person that I can save? Is there any one person that I can show grace? And he saw there was a guy who was somehow seeming as if I can give my grace to him because he seemed to be doing things in a more organized way. Can I show him grace? You see, this time there was no salvation. There was no eternal salvation. God was just showing grace to different people who tried as much as they could to follow the right way. So God uh, separates Abraham from the world, from the other people, to go to a land that is in Canaan. And God gave Abraham a promise to be a father to many uh, after being faithful in showing God that he can sacrifice uh, Isaac. You see, God told Abraham, hey, go and sacrifice your son, your only son, Isaac. And if you really love me, choose, choose now, choose, choose, are you going to do this? And when Abraham goes to the mountain, of course, didn't, he didn't sacrifice his son. Just before he, 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 he took down the knife to, to, to slew his son, uh, God showed him a lamb and he told him, okay, sacrifice that one. I think I've seen you can do it for me. So you see, God showed grace to Abraham. So Abraham was another guy. For those people who keep on saying, yeah, you know, the grace of God has, is just something which came. No, grace of God has always been there. It's only that it had not been revealed and people had not known that God's grace is always there. Then we see another guy called Lot. We see Lot. Lot also sh uh, was shown grace by God. If you read uh, Genesis 19, 19, uh, Genesis 19, 19, you can be able to see how Lot was given grace. Listen to what he says. Behold now, thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. So he's saying, Lord, you have shown me grace. You have shown me grace. You see, there was still grace even that time. So God was angry at Sodom and Gomorrah. He wanted to destroy it, but he had love for Lot and showing, showed him grace. Lot was a different person. He was a different person. And God said, I don't have to destroy, I don't have to destroy all these people together with the, the good and the bad. So let me show grace to someone else. Where there is hate, the Bible says, wherever there is hate, there is always love. So God showed love. But still also there was hate. God hates sin with passion. He doesn't love sin. So he hates sin and he loves good. He loves righteousness and he hates sin. He loves good and he hates evil. So you have to understand love and hate, they go hand in hand. So where there is grace, there must be also something bad which has been done. So it has always been like that. So you see, Lot also uh, found grace with God. So God instructs Lot to flee from Sodom. Uh, with his family. Let's also see another guy who was shown grace by God. That is uh, Moses. We see Moses. Uh, in Exodus 33, 12. Uh, Exodus 33, 12. Just before the law. Before the law. This is before the law, eh? Uh, Moses says, and Moses, uh, the Bible says, uh, and Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast found grace in my sight. So you see, Moses also found grace. Moses was not a 100% good person. You know, he killed someone. 
you know Moses was uh, hot tempered Moses was uh, you know he did so many wrong things but God still showed him grace grace was still there there was still grace it's only that people have never understood how to get the grace from God you know grace has always been there Verse 13, now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now that I may find grace in thy, uh, and consider, uh, mm, show me now that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. So God showed grace unto Moses and chose him to lead the people of God out of Egypt. So God showed grace to this guy. You see, there's always been grace. Let's also see. You know, people can say, what about the time of the law? Was there grace? Yes, there was, there was grace. <laughs> Let me show you. This is the time of the law. All right? The time of the law. Uh, this is the time of thou shall not, thou shall not. But still, remember, there was grace. Yes, God gave commandments. He gave the Ten Commandments. He said, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. But then... God gave commandments, so now you should not do this or that, but still gave grace. How? When you sin, there was a way you could redeem yourself, that is remission of sins, by doing something, sacrificing an animal, the blood atonement. So you have to have a blood atonement sacrifice. You, have, you had to sacrifice an animal to atone your sins, to... Atone your sins to, for the remissions of your sins. What is this? Sacrifice. <laughs> this is grace. If for sure, if you sinned, you could have just died on the, on the spot. Then God could not have shown his grace. But he showed grace because grace is getting what you don't deserve. So these people, after you sin, instead of dying, you can run very quickly and sacrifice something. And God showed grace through the sacrificing of those different things. But then after that... We see Jesus coming through, all right? Jesus coming through. After all this, we see Jesus coming through. And in Romans, in uh, Romans 10, 4, 10, 4, uh -huh, we see the Bible telling us one thing. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone that believes. So Christ is the end of the law. Is the end of all these things above, especially the law. Is the end of, you know, uh, all this time that grace was being hidden. But now we see Jesus actually reveals grace. Jesus reveals grace. So he's the one who brought grace into surface so that people could be able to understand wow you mean grace has always been there in john 1 7 the bible tells us for the law was given by moses but grace and truth came by jesus christ so grace and truth came by jesus christ yes jesus revealed the 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 grace but it had always been there it's only that people have had never noticed that grace has always been there all right. So Jesus comes and he reveals the grace. So uh, Christ's grace is uh, manifest at the cross. That's the main part or the main place where we see the grace of Jesus Christ being manifest the most. Him dying for us, doing something for us that you sit down and ask, why would a sinless person die for a sinner? That is grace. So no one preached grace under the law. That is, we know that. Under the law, no one preached grace, but it was there. It was exhibited, but it was not preached that God has given us grace. No, it was only exhibited. People are given different ways of how you can atone for your sins. That is grace. Because if you, if you do a, a wrong thing, you're supposed to die. But then why are they excuses? Why are we having excuses? These excuses are grace. All right? So in Acts 4.33, the Bible says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. You see, now the apostles are also preaching grace. They are, they are showing grace. The grace of God was upon them all. Acts 11.23, Who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. So you see, 
He had seen the grace of God. So they are starting to understand the grace is here. After Jesus, he is revealed grace. Grace, okay? Acts 13, 43. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. They were continuing in what? The grace of God grace to continue in the grace of god so grace has always been there let's see a couple of more verses uh, acts 15 11 but we have that but we believe that through the grace of the lord jesus christ we shall be saved even as they this is peter saying <laughs> we believe that by the grace of god not by doing anything not by the law we shall be saved no not by any other way you shall be saved. So there's a big transition and big revel, uh, revealing after Jesus came and after Jesus came through. So he was able to reveal grace in a bigger way. So now people can be able to understand. Now you don't need to do something. You just need to come to the cross of Jesus Christ. Come to the cross of Jesus Christ and you're saved. So he is starting to reveal <laughs> Guys, there's nothing you can do. There is nothing that you can do. It is only by the shed blood of Jesus Christ that you can be saved. So it's revealing the grace now. Jesus became the lamb. All right. Jesus was the lamb of God. So now he says, you don't need to do anything else. Just come through me. I will give you grace as long as you believe you have faith. Grace is activated by faith. So the only way you can be saved, the only way you can atone for your sins is through the cross of Jesus Christ. So you see, let me also show you something here. We are literally saved by grace uh, now and we are justified and we get eternal life and we get the Holy Spirit we are sealed. You see, there's a guy called David. David in uh, Psalms 51, 11, we see that uh, he was saying, and God do not... Take away your Holy Spirit from me. God, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Why? Because that time, that time you could lose the Holy Spirit. But when Jesus came, he revealed the grace. And now he gave another different way of being saved. Whereby you can't lose your salvation. Right now, can you lose the Holy Spirit? No. No, you can't lose your Holy Spirit. Right now we get the Holy Spirit inside us and He's sealed inside us. Ephesians 1.13 In whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom you believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You are sealed, okay? You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So, can you lose your salvation? No, you can lose. So, today... Jesus revealed grace and that grace we are able to see. Wow, it's coming so many good benefits. We get eternal life. This time there was no eternal life. It was only remission of sins. You can only, you know, you can only do it up to a certain time. But now when Jesus came, revealed grace and through him, we, we get the propitiation of sins. So now Jesus died for us once and for all. We don't have to have so many lambs. To, uh, to atone for our sins. No, Jesus is, is the only lamb. When you have Jesus, you have it all. So are you seeing a difference? Now we believe through grace and we are justified. Acts 18.27 And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive uh, him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. All right? So you believe through grace. So you're seeing something there. Are you, are you understanding something new? Are you understanding something? Let's check also Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I, command, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So the grace of God is able to build you up. You're able to be built up. You're able to be built up and to get an inheritance. You get an inheritance through grace. Grace is what? Getting what you don't deserve. What you don't deserve. So, do you deserve inheritance? No, you're a sinner. 
You are a filthy, wretched sinner. How do you deserve uh, to get inheritance? You see, the Bible tells us we are fellow heirs with Jesus Christ. So how can you be fellow heir, a, a, a righteous person and an, and, a, and an evil person getting the same share? No, it is only through grace. It is grace which can make you get that share. So we also see that uh, God chooses Paul uh, later on and gave him the gospel of grace and said, everyone will be judged according to it. So Jesus revealed something to Paul. So we see a guy called Paul. We see Paul. So Paul was revealed to the gospel of grace. And uh, Paul actually tells us <clears throat> in Romans 2.16, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So Paul was revealed a gospel. The gospel is a good news. What does gospel mean? Gospel means good news. Gospel, good news. Good news of what? Good news of what Jesus did for us. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins. For our sins. And we know this gospel, which was revealed to, is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you were saved. Uh, let me just read it. I don't want to give you my own words. Uh, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. So you stand in this gospel. It's a gospel of grace. By which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, keep in memory that gospel. Keep in memory. God says, I've written the laws, my laws inside you, all right? So you have to keep it there. It is the certificate. When you get to heaven, hey, tell me, what's the gospel? Uh, you see, you, you literally have to keep it here because the Bible says that, and I cannot say another thing. It has to be exactly what the Bible says. Keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Believing in vain is believing that the law can save you. All other things can save you. It is only... Through the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, whereby you can be saved. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Paul is not giving us another gospel. He's giving us something that he was revealed by Jesus. All right? Mm -hmm. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. How did Jesus die? How? 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 How did Jesus die? He shed his blood. His blood was the atonement for our sins. The Bible says in Leviticus 15, uh, should be 15, okay, I don't want to misquote, but it's around Leviticus 15, where, where he says that the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given you the blood to make atonement for your souls, not for your body, for your souls, because everything that you do in your body, it will be charged, it will be charged to your soul, all right? So God says, this I've given you so that you can make atonement. So the blood of Jesus was to make atonement for us. Are you understanding that? And then we see, uh, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you believe that, that Christ died for our sins, he was buried, he rose again uh, according to the scriptures, then you're saved. You don't even need to say a word. You don't even need to do anything. You just need to believe that and then you're saved. That's it. So you understand that. All right. And uh, we also see Paul fully preaches grace. Paul fully preaches grace. Uh, in Romans 1.5, uh, it says, By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. You see, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations. So you can receive grace through faith, obedience. Jesus is the redeemer of sins. Jesus is the one who redeems our sins. So what is to redeem? To redeem, redeem. Redeem literally means, uh, redeem is do something fully. Fully take or take out. Fully take 
maybe take in, take out. Let me just use the word take. Redeem is to fully give or fully take or once, you know. It is a once thing. Eh? Once. Forever. That is to redeem. But then before, we understand that we used to have remission. <laughs> what is remission? Uh, remission means for a while. You see, if somebody has cancer, we always hear that uh, after he has taken the chemo and all that, uh, now his cancer is on remission. Is on remission. It has not been redeemed out, no. It has gone away for a while. So now, this time, during the time of the law, it was only remission. Going, the sins are away for a while. But then they will come back again. You know, you're a sinner. You will pile up some more sins and then you go again for another remission. But now when Jesus came, he redeems us. He fully takes away once forever our sins. That's why we are told Jesus is the redeemer. Jesus is the redeemer. So he redeems us from our sins, which are past, present, and future. A Christian cannot sin. When you are saved, you cannot sin. The Bible tells us very well, you cannot sin because you have Christ inside you. You have God inside you and you're a new creature. You're not the old creature. You're a different creature. You're born again. Once you're born, you can't be unborn. Like I always say, salvation is like being born. How can you say, I'm not really sure if I'm born. I'm not sure if <laughs> by the am I really born? No, you can't say that. You actually know even the date that you were born. And you can't be unborn. No matter how many things have happened, you can't be unborn. That's how good grace is. You can be unborn. It's like marriage. Can you say, I'm not really sure if this is my wife. Even if we wrote, you know, we signed the papers, she has a ring, we had this ceremony. No, you'll always know this is my wife. That's it. So that's how salvation is under grace. So don't let anyone despise you and keep on binding you and telling you, you know, you have to do this, you have to do this to redeem yourself. I've been in those denominations. And for sure I can tell you they are sending so many people in condemnation and to hell. The Bible says in Christ there is no condemnation. Why are you condemning people? You have to do this, you have to do that. There is nothing that you can do to earn yourself salvation. Nothing. So keep on telling people, yeah, you know, you have to give this, you have to do that, you have to go and work for your own money. Go and work for your own things and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Tell people the truth. Stop condemning people so that they, you, they can always give you something. No, that is not what God called us. You see, the Bible tells us there are some people in the end times who will, who will teach that gain is holiness. <laughs> gain, you know, the more a pastor is, you know, rich with a, a set of cars, helicopters and big things. And, you know, it's more holy because you have that. No, according to God, gain is not even holiness. Actually, the Bible says it will be very hard for a rich man to get to the kingdom of God, to get to heaven. Yeah? It is even more easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. Why? Because gain is not godliness. Godliness. So those people are telling you, if you, you know, you're suffering because you did this, because you did not give. Ask them one, one thing. Show me the verse which says uh, you, or pe people who are rich are, 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 you know, are godly. Where? There is nothing. Even the Bible says, says to us that the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. Jesus himself, he had no house. So where are you telling us about, you know, you have to do this, you have to do... So does it mean that if, if I'm broke, I can't give to your church or I can't give to anything, then now I'm going to hell? That's a lie. That's a big lie. So the gospel of Jesus Christ is you have to do nothing. These, these fellas who tell you do this, do this, they are liars, they are perverts, they are... They are, they are wrongdoers. They are people who are only condemning you till you feel and you die. Especially that whole topic of tithe. It doesn't really make sense. It is in the law. Why are you putting law into grace? You know God moved it. Those are lies. Let them not lie to you. Okay. Uh, let's continue. Romans 3.24. He says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Justified how? Freely. You're justified freely. You're paying nothing to be justified. It is free. <laughs> it is free to be justified. So if you're justified freely, then 
Why is somebody telling you to pay something? All right? So redeem literally means to buy back. Jesus bought us back. Jesus bought us back. You are once sold. We, we are once sold to sin, but Jesus brought us bought us back through uh, uh, bought, bought, bought us back using his own blood. In Romans 7:14. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So I was sold under sin. <laughs> but what happened? Acts 20:28. 20, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. So you are redeemed, you are bought. You have been sold, but now you are bought. <laughs> you are bought by the blood of Christ. All right, blood of Christ. So if you're bought, can you buy something and then you keep on telling it, you see, you, you have already bought um, some goats there and then you keep on, you know, they have to do this. I, I don't know how to explain, but you're, you're being bought. So don't let an, another person keep on telling you, buy yourself. No, tell them to buy themselves, but not you. You have already been bought. Your faith, not works is counted for righteousness. So when you have faith, you are counted for righteousness. Romans 4, 4 to 5. Now to him that worketh um, is a reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So if you believe, if you believe you have uh, faith, then your faith is counted for righteousness. Then why is somebody telling you to do something? No, the grace of God needs you to do nothing, absolutely nothing. Just believe. We access, we access grace through faith. Hmm? Romans 5.2 By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We have access to this grace through faith just believe, have faith, and then you access this grace. Don't give any money. Don't give anything. <laughs> Just access the grace through faith. Simple terms. Romans 4, 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. It is by faith that it may be by grace. To the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So we, became we also become children of Abraham, children of promise through faith. Faith, faith, okay. Romans 5, 17. For, it, for if by one man's offense, by if by, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Who is this one man who did an offense? Adam. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So we were all made sinners by Adam, one man. But then another man came, Jesus, who came and gave us grace through faith. We just need to believe in this one man. The way we know that we got to be sinners, then we believe to this other guy and then... You see, we are neutralized and, and that's it. We become righteous. So we just need to believe in this, this one man who died for us. He came to redeem, to redeem our sins. Having been sold to sin, so he comes to redeem us. Okay? So you have to believe in that one man who came and did that for you. So the law, the law literally shows the offense. The, the law shows you the offense. It shows you uh, this is what you've done, this is what you've done, this is what you've done. The law shows you that. But grace brings righteousness. Grace literally brings righteousness. Romans 5, 20 to 21. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might, be, might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Where sin abounded, there was a lot of sin. <clears throat> where sin abounded, there also came grace. So grace also came and it was there. So Sin, 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 grace, grace, grace. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful time to live. All right. <clears throat> Verse 21. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign 
through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. You see? So grace and works are opposite. This is grace, this works. They are opposite. They can face each other. Where there is grace, they can be sin. Where there is sin, they can be grace. <laughs> you see? It's opposite. If you choose sin, then you have no grace. If you choose grace, then you have no sin. Simple. Romans 11.6 And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Then if you have to do something, then grace is no more Grace. If grace has to be paid for, then why do you have grace? If you have to do something for grace, then it's no more grace. (laughs) You see the Bible is clear? Let me repeat that verse. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Grace is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace if there is works. But if it be of works, let it, uh, it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. You see, the Bible is very clear. Why? Because Jesus did the work. Jesus already did the work. This is the work that Jesus did. He already did all the work. This is the work of dying for, uh, at the cross. Hmm? So that we may be saved by grace through faith in Jesus' work. So what are we saved by? We are saved by faith in the work that Jesus did. This work that we did. When we have faith that Jesus did this work for us, then we don't need to do another work. So why are you doing another work? And you say, "Uh, I have to do another work. No, this is the work that you need to believe. Believe in this work, then you don't have to do another work. This is the work that is finished. This is the finished work, simple. So when you believe in that, then you're saved. Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You see? Ephesians 2 5, even when we are dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. By grace you are saved. You are saved by grace. He did this work. This was grace, showing us grace, something that we did not deserve. Ephesians 2 8 9, by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Don't boast of something that you're doing. All right. So, how are we saved today? How can someone be saved? We are saved through three things. Through three, three things. The first one is grace. All right. You are saved through grace. So, grace, you are saved. Check Romans. Romans uh, 3.24. So, you are saved by... Grace, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. So you're saved by grace. Number two, you're saved by faith. You can't access grace without faith, all right? Romans 5, Romans uh, 5, Romans 5, uh, then uh, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have peace through faith. Mm? Okay. Therefore being justified by faith. 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 We have peace with God. We can only have peace with God by faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Then the last thing is blood. All right. This one we find in Romans. uh, Romans 5.9. 5.9. Now let's read. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we can be saved from the wrath through him. So we are justified by three, three things. Justified. All right. Justified means is like you just if I had not done it. Just if I had not sinned. So you become as if you had not done something. So we are saved by God's grace. We are saved by God's grace. Through our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful sentence. We are saved by God's grace through our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Once you understand that, you already know how you are saved. Romans 3.25 Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. 
We have propitiation. What is propitiation? Propitiation is the act of appeasing wrath. So, he, Jesus appeased the wrath of God through his blood. So, we, we have the propitiation through the blood of Jesus Christ, through faith, faith in this blood. So, if you believe in this blood, you see in the last days, the Bible tells us, people will have a form of godliness, godliness, but deny the power thereof. The power of what? The power of the blood of Jesus Christ. People will deny this power. They will say, no, 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 you have to do something. Do something which is in the law so that you can be saved. No. When they tell you that, tell them, no, there is nothing you can do. It is, you're only saved by grace, the grace of God. There's nothing you can do. There's no much offering, no much tithe, no nothing that you can do to be able to acquire yourself uh, justification. You can't. You can't. For sure, you can't. In uh, Romans 3, 26 to 28, the Bible says, To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? Why are you boasting? Why are you boasting? Why are you saying, I am good, I can be able to do that? Is it, it, is, it is excluded by what law of works? Nay, by the law of faith. So, this boasting, the law, this one, things that I can do, it is excluded already. Yeah? It is excluded. You cannot do anything. But the law of faith, this faith, is the one which is saving you. Nothing else. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. That's verse 28, Romans 3, 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by the faith without the deeds of the law. There is nothing that you can do to be saved. Grace abides. So if you think you'll get to heaven upon what you do rather than what Jesus did, automatically you'll be rejected by Jesus. If you think uh, Jesus asks you, why, why, why do you think you need to come to heaven? You, you know you are the gate. Uh, Jesus, because uh, I, I did this, I, I said this, or I gave tithe, or I gave offering, or I went and was baptized, or I, I, I spoke in tongues, or I said this prayer, or I did, you see, I, I did this, I, I this, I, <laughs> you'll be rejected with your eyes. There's no way you will go. The Bible says, actually, Jesus tells us very clear, if you don't do his will, that day you'll be surprised. In heaven, there'll be a lot of surprises, so many surprises, and people will be, they'll be wondering during the when you meet Christ, there will be so many surprises. Listen to Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Which will is this? Believing the gospel. He told you, believe the gospel. Did you believe? Or did you do something else? So if you do not believe the gospel, then you say, there's something that I can do to get to heaven then no matter how many demons you will chase, no matter how many tongues you speak with, no matter how many prayers you did, no matter how many good things you did, you will <laughs> be rejected. He will reject you. Matthew 7, uh, to 23. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and uh, in thy name done many wonderful works? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Why is, why is Jesus saying, depart from me, you that work iniquity? And yet, you are prophesying, you are casting out demons, you are doing all those kind of things. Those are your own works. Those are things that you think because I prophesied and I did this and did this and did this, I am good. I don't need to follow the grace of God. I don't need to... Have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't have to believe in the gospel. When you don't believe in the gospel, what happens? You want to go to heaven through your own works. You want to go to heaven through your prophesying. You want to go to heaven through your speaking in tongues. You want to go to heaven through doing things that, you know, it's me. It's me. You see, <laughs> Jesus, I'm so good. Uh, I didn't really believe your gospel. I thought I am better when I prophesy and when I do these things. I'm a bit better I can get to heaven on my own works. You'll be chased out there. You'll be chased out like a dog. 
Please believe the gospel. The gospel is the only thing. There is nothing you can do. Believe in this work of Jesus Christ. This is the only work which gives you grace to enter the kingdom of God. All the other things are works of men. All the other things are just people that create things to make themselves look holy. And also to steal from you. And to lie to you that you don't need God's grace. You need to do what they tell you. They give you their traditions. Their traditions of men. Don't listen to those kind of things. Believe in the gospel. The gospel is the only thing which can save you. Everything else is a waste of time. Is a waste of resources. Waste of money. Waste of... Go pay school fees without money. Don't waste it on people who are trying to sell you the grace of God. Those people who are selling anointing oils and selling this and selling this. Liars. Liars. There's nothing that they, you can be able to do to earn yourself salvation. Believe the gospel. This is the grace of God. God loves you. See you. And uh, just look forward for another message. God bless you.